Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today, the last Sunday of October, we celebrate the solemnity of Christ the King, our Lord Jesus Christ, King of all things, Universorum Rex. It's a great joy for each one of us to contemplate Jesus as the King, the King of our lives, the one who brings together the creation and salvation. All things are made by him and in view of him, by him, because Christ is God. He is the maker of all things. In view of him, because creation has been shaped according to the greatest model of all things, Christ, his human nature, his human soul. Everything has Christ as its uh, pattern and, uh, and uh, model of perfection. But Christ is also the king of salvation because he is a redeemer. We know that this solemnity was instituted by Pius XI during the Holy Year of Redemption, 1925. The reason to establish such a solemnity was to make clear that in Christ there is a unity between creation and salvation, between life and faith. In fact, Pius XI teaches in this uh, encyclical establishing today's celebration that there are two reasons why Christ is the King. One, it is a power that Jesus has because he is God, a divine power which makes Christ the king of all things. He has made all things out of nothing. And there is another reason why Christ is the king. This is something that Christ acquired by his ministry as the high priest, our redeemer. This right comes to Christ because of his redemption. He has paid uh, with his own blood uh, the things which are made anew by him. Everything is created, everything has been recreated by the blood of Christ. This is a double title why Christ is a king. Let us reflect even more carefully on this important unity between, we can also say, reason and faith, between nature and grace, between man and God. There is no opposition. This distinction, of course, comes to a complete unity in the person of our Lord, Jesus Christ, in his kinship over all things. We read in the first in the epistle of St. Paul to the Colossians that God made everything in Christ. He holds the primacy because everything was made in him, through him, in view of him. And then we read in the gospel, the gospel of St. John, that beautiful dialogue between Jesus and Pilate. Are you a king? Yes, I am. But my kinship is different. 
My kinship is not about a political power. My kinship is not of this world. My kinship comes from above, which does not mean that this kinship has nothing to do in today's society within this world. But it just says that the power of Christ comes from God. It's the power of God to rule over all things of this world. But it's a different kinship. It's the kinship of truth. I am a king. For this was I born. And for this came I into the world that I should give testimony to the truth. This is a beautiful statement to understand the nature of Jesus' kinship. This, we could say, second title of Jesus' kinship, the kinship of truth. Christ is, before Pilate, ready to be condemned, to be crucified for our sins, in order to give witness to the truth, the truth about He's being the redeemer of mankind, the true king, not only the king of Jews, but the king of all men, because he has paid for us in order to rescue us from eternal death. Within the concept of truth, we find this clear unity between reason and faith, between natural law and supernatural law, between nature and grace. Christ is the king of truth. You remember that in this dialogue, Pilate was agnostic. He tried to uh, deny the power of truth, the existence even of truth. What does truth mean, he said. But uh, Jesus, in giving witness to that truth, to his witness until until the cross until the sacrifice of the cross is confirming that truth is what is made by God when he created everything truth is what has been redeemed by the blood of Christ especially when truth is denied when the truth is now uh, put away by a political power in order to have a life without God. So, my dear brethren, Jesus is the, is the king of truth. And truth is, first of all, the nature as it is. It's the natural law as a reflection of God's law. And it is the supernatural law, the commandments of Christ, the divine precepts of Christ, the law of the church. Between the two, there is no opposition. We have a beautiful example of this symphony of truth when we look especially at marriage. Marriage, according to God's will, as we read in the book of Genesis, confirmed by Christ in the Gospel of St. Matthew, is a pact between man and woman. And this complementarity brings them to be one flesh in order to be open to life and to do to, to give glory to God, establishing a new family. And this is the common good of the society. This is the natural foundation of any society, the complementarity between man and woman who together come to form a family. The natural family is the heart of a society. But this natural pact, this natural law uh, pact is now uh, uh, made by Christ even a supernatural uh, uh, alliance of life. In fact, by the sacrament of matrimony, that natural union is raised to a new degree, a supernatural degree, because by grace, 
man and woman, husband and wife, can be faithful to that, uh, to that pact, to that covenant of life. You see the truth. There is no position between natural marriage and uh, the sacrament of matrimony. They complement each other. The natural foundation is necessary to have the supernatural grace of matrimony. Nature and grace come to be one in the truth. The same truth about matrimony, the truth that Christ witnessed to the end, till his death on the cross. And this is the reason why we can never accept any other possible union between people, even though only civil. The Church can only accept, because of this unity of truth, that union which is a marriage, which is the sacrament of marriage. Otherwise we split in Christ nature and grace. We split the mystery of Christ, God and man, as two opposite identity. No. This is the reason why in today's confusion, after this uh, Pope's statement about the same-sex civil unions, we have always to remember that the truth is Christ's teaching. And this truth has always a natural foundation. Let us together, my dear brethren, give praise to our King, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray to him, especially in this holy celebration, to have ideas clear within the church, without misleading the people, without giving the impression that the church has changed her teaching. No, this is not our own teaching. This is the gospel. This is the Holy Bible. This is the holy perennial tradition of the Church. This is the witness of Christ until death. Before Pilate, we stand for Jesus' kinship. We adore his kinship. We kneel only before Christ, our King. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.